In this tutorial, we're going to continue from where we left off in the last tutorial and actually develop a linked list. To begin with, we'll go ahead and define that node class. So we'll say public class node. And on the inside, we'll go ahead and declare some data, public int data, as well as our reference to the next node in the list. So I'll say public node next. After that, we'll go ahead and create a constructor. So I'll say public node and take in an int that we'll just call i. We'll copy that information over into data and set the next node to be null. Now we can actually go ahead and start playing around with this node. So I can drop down here into main and let's create a node. So I could say node, my node, it's a new node. And then we'll pass it an arbitrary number here such as seven. Now the question is how do I start to add more nodes to this list? Well, one approach would be to say my node.next gets a new node and again pass it an arbitrary number here such as 5. And we could actually continue this pattern and say my node.next.next gets a new node. In this case I'll pass an 11. And you could see we could do this any number of times. I can say .next.next.next gets a new node and we'll pass it a 4. Now believe it or not this code actually runs. So you can see it says press any key to continue. So we need a way to visualize what's going on. So let's go back to node here and we can put in a print method. So we could say public void print. And if we tell a node to print, we can actually try to make it look like a linked list. So let's say console.writeline. And the first thing that we'll print is a little bar symbol and that's probably right above your enter key. And then we'll print the data. And then we'll print another bar. And in this case, we'll actually have a little arrow coming off of it. Now let's come back down here and we'll tell my node to print my node.print and if we were to go ahead and run it you could see that a 7 appears but the question is where is the 5 and the 11 and the 4? The trick is actually going to be to use recursion so just after I tell this node to print itself what we can say is if the next node does not equal null then let's tell the next node to print so we can say next.print and again the reason this works is because next is a node if you look up here at the definition so what's nice about this is the first node is actually going to tell the second node to print and the second node is going to tell the third node to print and so on and so forth. You can see that this is recursive because we're calling print from within print even though we have this object oriented syntax here. Okay, so if I were to go ahead and run it now you can see that we have 7, 5, 11, and 4 all on separate lines. And so let's go back here and change this so it's no longer a right line. We're going to make it a right. If I run it at this point you can see that we now have 7, 5, 11, and 4, the way that we entered these things into the linked list. Now if we come back down here to main, clearly this is not scalable. You can imagine these lists are going to have hundreds or even thousands of nodes in them. So we've got to use a different approach. So let's come back up here to node real quick. And we'll put in a new method called public void add to end that's going to take in some data that it needs to add. Now a node can be in one of two different situations. Its next node can either be null or it can point to a valid node. So what we're going to do is check for that. If next is equal to null, then we know that we're at the end of the list. So what we can do is we can just add that data right here. We can say that next gets a new node and pass it the data. Now if next is not null, then we know that it's a valid node. So I can say next.add to end data. And again, you can see that this is a recursive call because we're calling add to end from within add to end and telling that node that it has the responsibility of adding the data, at which point it's just going to pass that responsibility down the chain until eventually one of those nodes next is null. So now we can come back down here to main and we can clean up this nonsense where we're saying next.next.next. .next. I'll get rid of that. And then what we can do is tell my node to go ahead and add to the end. So I'll say my node add to end a 5 my node dot add to end an 11 and my node dot add to end a 4. Finally what we'll do is we'll tell my node to print and let's see what the output is. Great so it looks like it's working. Now typically we don't want to do something like this. We'd like to have a separate list class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down for now and drop program down just a bit and then we're going to create another public class. In this case, we'll say public class my list, for lack of a better name. And on the inside of this, we'll create a node, public node head of list. Or better yet, how about we call it head node? We'll also need a constructor, public my list. And on the inside of this, when we first create a list, the head node, 
is going to be null. Now, one of the first methods that we'll want to create would be public void add to end, just like we had in our node. And again, we're going to take in some data. And at this point, head node could be in one of two different states. It could be null or it could be not null. So if it's null, it's pretty easy. We can just say if the head node is equal to null, then we can just add the data right there. So I'll say head node gets a new node and pass it the data. Now the nice thing about the way that we've structured this, so I can put an else here, if the head node is not null, then we know it's a valid node. And because of that, I can start to call methods on it. So I could say something like head node dot add to end, passing it the data. And what's going to happen there is the head node is going to pass that responsibility down the chain just like we saw before. Another method that we'll want inside of our list is the ability to visualize it somehow. So we'll come down here and create public void print. And again, because we've done a lot of the work inside of node, I can just say if the head node does not equal null, meaning that it's a valid node, then tell the head node to print. Great, now let's drop down here to main. And I don't need to work with these nodes anymore. And instead, I'll create a my list that's called list, and we'll say that it gets a new my list. Now at this point, I could start to add data to the list. So I'll pass it a nine here. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll just copy these, add a couple of things, nine, maybe a five, a seven, an 11. And then finally, after that, I can just say list.print, and let's see what happens. Great, it looks like we have the same output, so things are working. Now, if you remember from the previous tutorial, you remember how we talked about adding to the beginning and adding to the end and adding in the middle. So let's go ahead and write the method add to beginning for the list class. So we'll come up here, and maybe right after add to end, we can say public void add to beginning. And again, we'll take in some data. Now again, the head node can be in two different situations. It can be null or it can be not null. So let's do the easy one first. If the head node is equal to null, then what we can do is just say that head node gets a new node and pass it the data. Now if it's not null, we're going to have to create this temporary node like we saw in the video, and then we're going to have to readjust the pointers. So let's put an else statement in here, else. Then we'll go ahead and create a temporary node. So we'll say node temp gets a new node, and we'll pass it the data. And right here is where we have to be careful with our pointers. So let's say temp.next gets head node. And again, you can go back and look at the previous tutorial to visualize what's going on here. And then finally, we'll set head node equal to temp. In other words, head node is now pointing to temp. Great, so let's test it out. We'll drop back down here to main. And what I'll do is I'll take these statements right here, and I'll copy and paste them. Let's comment these guys out. And then instead of add to end, we'll say add to beginning. In fact, let's copy this, paste that guy right there, and go on down the list. Now at this point, we should expect to see some different output. So when I run it, you can see that we have a reversed order from the last one that we had. And if you think about it, 9 was the first one that was added to the list, so because we're adding to the beginning, it's now going to be the last node in the list. Good, so let's stop this. And now that we've done the two easy ways to add to the list, let's go ahead and work on the add sorted method. Now actually what we'll do is we'll jump up here to class node first, and let's stub in right here. We'll put in public void add sorted, taking in the data. Now realize that we have three different states that we have to worry about. The first one is that our next node could be null. That's fairly straightforward. The next one is that the data is less than the next data, at which point we know that we can go ahead and add it. Otherwise, we're going to pass that responsibility to the next node because we know that the data is greater than the next node's data. So let's code this up. If we say if next is equal to null, then let's go ahead and just say next gets a new node and pass it the data. Otherwise, we have to worry if this data is less than the next node's data. So I can say else if data is less than next.data, at which point we know that we're in the correct spot in the list. Then what we can say is node temp gets a new node, passing it the data. After that, we'll say temp.next gets this.next. And finally, I'll say this.next gets temp. And again, if this is confusing code to you, I recommend that you go back and you look at the previous tutorial. All right, now if it's not this situation, we'll say else, 
then what we can do is pass that responsibility to the next node in the list, giving it the data. All right, let's drop down to my list. And just above add to beginning, we can say public void add sorted. And again, taking in some data. And because we're inside class my list, I know that I have to work with the head node. So again, the head node can be null in these situations that we saw before. So let's go ahead and stub that in. If head node is equal to null, meaning that this list is empty, then we can just say that the head node gets a new node and pass it the data. Otherwise, we've got the situation where the data that we're trying to insert is less than that of the head node. So let's check for that. We can say else if data is less than head node's data. And think about it. If the data that we're trying to add is less than head node's data, then all we have to do is add to the beginning of the list. And fortunately, I've already written that method right here. So let's go ahead and call it add to beginning, and we'll give it the data. Now, if it's not one of these two situations, we'll say else, then we know that it needs to go further down the list. So I'll say head node dot add sorted, and we'll pass it the data. Great, now let's test this out. We'll drop down here. Again, we'll comment out this code. I'll do a quick copy of it, paste it right here, uncomment. And then what I'll do is I'll change all of these to add sorted. Copy that. Might be easier to do a search and replace, but here you go. So if I were to run this, I should see that the data is sorted. I should see a 5, 7, 9, then 11. So let's see what happens. And it looks like it works. So that's it for this coding example. I would recommend that you come up here to the MyList class and play around with this code a little bit. Maybe write a remove method. So hopefully you understand a little bit more about linked lists and how to implement them.